Last week I saw that Phase Runner and Envato are organizing a Winter Wonderland Photoshop contest. Phase Runner provided us just a few images to use and even if we were allowed to use extra assets, I challenged myself in using only the ones from the contest. That really helped me to improve my level because I was forced to invent a lot and you'll see in today's video how I did that. I must say that even if I'll never have Phase Runner or Panjul's level, I feel honored to learn from them. They inspired me so much in creating this design and also other they push me to become better so because we all have different paths in life I am really happy for my achievements so far and I tried to make this design in my style and as unique as I could enough talk let's get down to business I started by using this photo and I have made it uh, bigger and I have uh, rotated uh, counterclockwise then I have used uh, this winter picture uh, I press ctrl T right click warp and I try to um, drag the corners and the middle so that was the picture after the warp tool and then i added a mask and i kept uh, only the part that uh, i wanted this road that will go to my tower then i have added this uh, brightness and contrast and i duplicated uh, the same winter picture so uh, this one i have duplicated and moved it a bit uh, to the top so i kept only this part that looks like some mountains in my vision then from this picture i have copied this part of the sky so uh, with the marquee tool i have selected this part and uh, i have uh, copied it into my uh, design and uh, i have uh, made it a bit uh, bigger and set the blending mode to overlay and i have added a mask i have masked the bottom area then i have added another brightness and contrast levels to darken up everything even more and then the clouds image this one i have uh, duplicated and i have uh, rotated upside down this image of the clouds ctrl t right click flip it vertically set the blending mode to soft light add a mask and uh, mask everything keep only the parts uh, that you want and then on the right part of my image i added a layer set to color where i have painted with the red color so create a new layer set it to color take the brush and with the red color just uh, paint and if it is too much double click on the layer and we are going to apply the blend if so hold alt drag the slider to the right now let me explain you how i created uh, this uh, tower we have some parts here that are made from the same image as i said uh, this part was uh, taken from this picture is uh, this one i have uh, cut it from here i have added some levels and some uh, selective color where I have changed the neutrals to match a bit the other colors of my tower. I have used only this picture in creating that uh, tower. What I did was selecting this tower Ctrl Enter, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. So remember this part I'm going to keep it. So basically the image that I just told you about uh, is that part from that uh, tower. So let's paste it. So I have used uh, this part Let's uh, Ctrl C, Ctrl V again. And to this part, I have uh, ap applied again the warp, so right click. Then the same layer, I duplicated and I moved it a bit down. So it's the same thing. Uh, this one is duplicated, right? So uh, I have uh, used it twice. And then again, the same thing. I have uh, used the warp and I have dragged the corners to the sides to create uh, this uh, interesting shape. And I did it again to the bottom area. And then the last one is the same layer, but it is rotated. So this layer, it's rotated. So right click, flip it vertically. And now with the same right click warp, I'm going to uh, try and show you how I created the bottom area but you got the point is just the uh, warping and then matching the ones on top now it uh, looks easy but uh, it took me some while to figure it out uh, that I want to create this shape of this tower but I am really glad to show you my process so you can use this idea in your uh, next uh, designs so after I created the tower, I needed some color changes and of course lights, shadows and all that. First I have added a mask and masked the bottom area so uh, it looks like it's inside those clouds and the snow. And then I have added a layer set to soft light. This is the dodge and bore method that I'm using when I want to emphasize the shadows on my uh, designs to give volume to the object or the person that I want to modify.
Right then with levels I have darkened up uh, everything even more and then with the selective color I have uh, made everything to the bluish uh, tones. So uh, now is the time for the highlights. Uh, you know that uh, if you followed my tutorials I use linear dutch for the highlights and uh, this is really easy. Go to layer, new layer and uh, the mode should be linear dutch, fill it with black and uh, as I always do first I set up a base so double click on the layer to add the blend if so hold alt and drag the right slider to the right until around 100 then in our case i'm going to use this pinkish color from the background this reddish color so i have almost the same color here uh, on the base and um, a bit on the tower then blue color using the same method then with a greenish color and here i have painted with the white color the last one I have uh, painted with some pinkish uh, color on the left side of my uh, tower. Then I have added those uh, lights here. I have copied that uh, light from uh, here, from this side and uh, use it uh, here on uh, the tower but I have changed the color from red to yellow. Then uh, this part I complicated myself but I need to show you it anyway. Uh, I wanted something and then I changed my mind and I work a lot. I have used only the assets that were provided. So uh, I created a new solid color and I have set it to blue and um, on the mask I have pressed Ctrl and I so it doesn't show and then with the pen tool I have uh, selected the parts that uh, I wanted to fill with something else. So after I select it I press Ctrl and enter and here on the mask I have pressed delete so now we have that part selected. That was the start and then inside this I have added many uh, images from the assets that uh, were provided. First one was uh, this one so is the picture with uh, the city and I have kept only the sky part. Then on top of it one of the auroras uh, images that uh, were provided. So this one I dragged it uh, there on top of that uh, picture with the city and I have uh, moved it around and set the blending mode to screen from normal I set it to screen and I have repeated the process and then at the end I have added an exposure and made everything uh, darker. Then I made the windows uh, that uh, now they look like that. I uh, added a solid color and made them blue and then with the layer set to linear dodge a solid color I have painted some glow let me show you so create a new solid color set it to a bluish color something like that set the blending mode to linear dodge and on the, on the mask press Ctrl and I and now if you take the white color and the brush you will add some glow wherever you paint with the white color so this is how I added the glow over there and then I have manually painted the snow here on the towers so this is my snow I'm not an expert on drawing but I think from the distance <laughs> looks like uh, the thing that I needed then I have duplicated this tower two times and um, to the first tower and to this tower I have added uh, a Gaussian blur and I have added a one pixel uh, blur and I have reduced the opacity from 100% to 50% and to this one I have added a hue and saturation and I have uh, colorized it to red and decrease the opacity of this hue and saturation to 40% so it looks like it's uh, really far away. Later on I decided to connect them somehow and I have made it some bridges from the Aurora pictures. So let me show you how I did that. So I had uh, this Aurora picture from the assets that were provided. Press Ctrl T, rotate it, uh, flip it vertically and I instantly so that this shape will look really well on my uh, towers. I have uh, selected with uh, the lasso tool. I took the lasso tool and I have uh, selected this part and I have uh, pressed the mask and this layer I will set it to screen. Press Ctrl L on the layer that's levels and you will increase the the blacks on the image and then on the mask with the black color we are going to hide the areas that uh, we don't want uh, to be visible and then I have added a hue saturation and um, clip it inside press colorized and I have made everything the same color something like that I selected both layers those ones and I press Ctrl and I to merge the layers and set the blending mode again to screen so now my layer it's uh, rasterized so I place this one here made it a bit smaller something like that and on this layer I took the smudge tool and I played around and drag some parts to the bottom area. 
Alright and then on top of it I created a new layer and then with the brush tool set to white I have manually drew on top of this the ice so it looks like it has a road over there. So this is how I created the ice tower bridge and then on the same layer the white layer that I just created with the smudge tool I have did the same thing dragged it uh, to the bottom and um, this is how I created this uh, lovely bridge. And the town portal wasn't that hard so the first image that I created was uh, this one so I just painted with a cloud brush this white area and then I have added a mask and mask the other parts so I can keep only this part. I have added this photo with the town so I hold alt and uh, I have uh, clip it inside that's it and on top of this I have added another layer and the same cloudy brush but this time the layer is set to screen and the color it's a uh, bluish color on top of it I duplicated this uh, image with the city this one so I drag the image with the city on top and I have set the blending mode to overlay and I have uh, added the mask let's go to the boat part so here a lot of things happened I'm going to uh, take them uh, step by step the easiest one is the snowman uh, that's really easy the only part that I used was this one uh, I have uh, with the pen tool I have selected this area Press Ctrl and Enter, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, that's the first one, then duplicate it, press Ctrl T, make it uh, smaller, and then again, duplicate it, make it even smaller, so that's uh, the snowman, and of course for the hands, I have used uh, those parts from here, so uh, on this image, I have uh, taken the object selection tool, selected this part, press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, so this is uh, the hand, and I think this one also the other hand with object selection tool I have selected this part the same Ctrl C Ctrl V and uh, I have uh, what I needed for my snowman the boat part took me a lot I think the most part uh, I spent on creating the boat so let me explain you how I created the boat part before we move on to the boat part let's take a slight break and talk about our today's sponsor Envato Elements. With over 50 million assets Envato Elements is the best tool that we can use when we're creating our artworks. A lot of people ask me if there are limited downloads like other assets website but with Envato you have access to unlimited downloads and royalty free stock photos, videos, music, stock videos, fonts, overlays and so much more. Whenever I create a design I go to the photo section and I look for a fighter for example and you can choose from thousands of fighters. One of the coolest features of Envato is the graphics section where I mostly look for overlays and you can find there fire overlays, water, snow and anything that you can think of. And of course one of the most interesting parts of Envato is the 3D section where for today's design I search for inspiration in creating my boat and I search for wooden boats and that helped me a lot in achieving a more real result. You can download all the asset that you want with just one subscription. Envato Elements offers 50% off to an annual subscription. So rather than paying $33 per month on a monthly plan, you'll be paying only $16.50 per month on an annual plan. If you want to give it a try, I'll drop a link in the description below the video. So basically everything started with uh, this part so if you believe it or not the boat is made from this uh, rooftop of this building so with the pen tool I have uh, selected this area cup it all right so this is the part press Ctrl T make it bigger rotate it something like that and then press Ctrl T again right click and with the warp tool I'm going to add some shape so it looks like this part of my boat Let me show you on the original one so um, I have added this part and then underneath I have added another shape this one which is uh, obtained by the same warp and uh, cut that area and the last one this one if you look closer this part is the same with uh, this one it's just uh, a warp all right and that's basically the shape of my boat and then I have added uh, here inside uh, this layer I have added with uh, a layer set to multiply a shadow the same here inside and to the bottom area this uh, shadow that is also set to multiply it looks really black but uh, hold on because uh, 
will have a lot of uh, layers on top and it won't be that visible so I wanted to have that shadow underneath so my boat looks like it's floating that's why the, the shadow is here and is not here then this part I have taken uh, the same from the roof I have uh, with a pen tool I have uh, cut this uh, part of uh, the same uh, counter C and then on my image uh, this one I have rotated and uh, place it uh, here where I needed it and then the same thing the same layer that I just copied if you apply the warp tool on it and move it around you can add any shape that you want and place it uh, wherever you want it to be so this thing that I just created looks somehow like a boat um, then I have taken some parts of the snow from the houses that we have in that uh, photo with uh, the snow so here I have uh, copied this part of uh, the snow that it's on top of the houses on the rooftop then I have copied this uh, part and uh, moved it around that's uh, the part that I'm going to use on the boat all right and I have uh, used this many times and uh, place it on top of my boat so I covered all my boat into the snow thing and then I have uh, placed some snow from the same mountain image on top of uh, my boat to look like it's uh, frozen so let's go back on this part I'm going to select some parts of the snow so go to select color range and here I'm going to uh, copy a part of uh, the snow okay press ctrl C then go back ctrl V and this part I have uh, press ctrl T warp it and uh, played a bit with uh, the snow part and then when I finished I press enter and I have added a mask to mask only that part so um, yeah this is how I added that uh, frozen feeling to my boat and I have added some levels to make the board uh, a bit uh, darker so I have decreased the whites a lot so my boat is darker here on the left side and now after I finished everything with all the details I have uh, selected everything that I created on the boat part and I have duplicated those layers and I press Ctrl and I and I have merged everything and then on this layer I have uh, converted to a smart object so right click convert it to a smart object press Ctrl T on it the same warp and I uh, warped a bit the boat to look like it's coming from uh, this part so it's closer to the eyes something like that and then I went to filter and here on the blur I chose motion blur I added something like an angle and the distance around 24 all right and then I have duplicated this layer again right click on it and rasterize layer to this one before warping it I pressed again the filter and added more blow motion blur this time I did it uh, like uh, 200 something like that and press ctrl t warp and drag it and move it around so you have uh, that uh, shape that you want so i manually painted those parts of uh, my boat first when i uh, drew those uh, things i didn't had uh, those uh, effects on the boat so um, first i uh, drew those parts added the snow the same uh, manual snow that i painted and then i have added the snowman added an exposure to the entire boat i have uh, with a color dodge i have painted with some blue color on the boat to have that uh, icy effect and with the dodge and burn i made everything even darker with the highlights because here we'll have some uh, candle that will light that area i added some uh, orange color and the highlights with the white color at the end so i have added those uh, effects after i painted uh, the snow and uh, the things that i put on the boat right so that was the part with the boat the floating boat because i wanted to have uh, a magic uh, trail i have added uh, those uh, auroras and i have played around with the warp also so basically from the assets that were provided i have uh, used uh, this one and with the warp tool i have uh, added uh, this shape right and set the blending mode to screen and with the um, mask i mask everything and kept only that part and i did the same thing with the other ones so it all started with this picture you need to select the little girl from the image All right.
right then press counter and enter in my case i'm going to show you now uh, without adding a mask so i'm going to uh, press counter c what i did now was to copy every part of her body i know that uh, this uh, sounds really really uh, bad but uh, this is how i created those parts so with the lasso tool i have selected uh, this hand uh, right click and layer via cut then go again on the layer with the little girl select the other hand same right click layer via cut on the layer with the little girl i selected this part of her jacket all right the same right click layer via cut with this hand so this hand let's call it left hand i'm going to right click and convert it to a smart object and let's go to edit and here puppet warp click once here once in the middle and once on the hand part and i'm going to drag this part a bit uh, this part pay attention not to distort it too much because then it won't look uh, too uh, real with the other hand let's call it right hand so i first rotate it and moved it uh, a bit to the top and now the same right click convert it to a smart object go to edit puppet warp, puppet warp and the same first just add the points that you need to move and then you should move the parts from the hand right so those were the parts and then i needed to have this part to uh, match the body so i dragged with some points here from the puppet warp and uh, i uh, carefully uh, blend it so it looks like that and i drag it underneath the rest of the body of course you need to play more because now uh, it doesn't really look well i had to play around more so what i did was right click and rasterize the layer selected only this part from the hand press ctrl t and with the warp i dragged uh, the parts from the hand again and you know i played a bit uh, it took some time to make it look uh, better but that was the start and of course uh, the hand I didn't really like it uh, like that so on this hand I have uh, selected the hand again and the uh, layer via cut and on this layer I uh, flip it and rotate it so she should have the hand uh, like that let's go uh, to the bottom area here uh, this part press ctrl t warp and play around with her jacket all right so that was the start and uh I had to manually draw the hair so I had to hide a bit uh, of her head so here on this layer with uh, the head part I had to uh, select uh, that part that I didn't want to keep this one and I have added a mask right and on top of it I have uh, with a hairbrush I spent some time and I have uh, you know uh, draw the hair part and uh, that took me some time but uh, I really love the, the result after all you can see it on the left uh, if you don't know how to draw the hair I have a tutorial on my channel on uh, how to draw the hair using uh, the mouse or uh, the tablet and of course I have changed the colors of her jacket and uh, the, the pants that she has and uh, for the lamp part on the little girl's uh, image let's select the lamp part so with the object selection tool I selected this part then press ctrl C go again to your image ctrl V and let's make it smaller press ctrl T so I uh, copied this part press ctrl C ctrl V and ctrl T then flip it horizontally and uh, I have uh, placed it here so it looks like it's from one piece and with the uh, eraser tool or you can add a mask if you want uh, I erase the parts that shouldn't be there so now it looks uh, like a whole uh, lamp or lantern anyway and then I have uh, manually drew uh, that part that uh, she is holding and uh, yeah, I made it uh, look like that and because she's inside the boat I have uh, added a mask and mask uh, the parts that should be inside the boat so first was adding uh, the dodge and burn to create uh, more shadows then with the levels I have made everything even darker with the exposure even more darkness and with the hue and saturation first I had changed the colors as I said of the pants and then the colors of 
the jacket. Then the highlights, the base, I have uh, used this linear dodge and as I said I am I applied the blend if and I have painted with an orange color. Then with the white color I have painted the other highlights. The rest I have added some uh, winter trees on the left side. So uh, those trees that uh, you see here I have uh, taken them from uh, this picture so I uh, cut it uh, I think uh, this one from the left so with the pen tool I use the pen tool and select the winter tree. Alright, so I place it uh, here on the left, duplicate it and uh, I just change the opacity and colors so uh, the one that is uh, far away it's, uh, it looks uh, more opaque than the ones that are in front. And of course what I forgot was this uh, Envato logo that I put it on uh, a girl's uh, jacket. And uh, let's see, I added the magic. Uh, I have a lot of tutorials uh, on my channel on how to add uh, magic. Uh, in the, this case I use it to create some uh, glow here on uh, the lamp. And here on top uh, the same, I added some glow. So you can watch that tutorial to learn how to create the magic. I learned that method, this type of glow from Max Asabin, who is the wizard of Photoshop. And then at the end, I wanted to have some glows on the ground. So I have added uh, this glow and the other one. So let me show you, this one is color dodge. So um, create a new layer and set it to color dodge, double click. And now this time I'm going to drag this slider all the way to around 100. And then hold alt and drag the left slider, but not all the way to zero, but around uh, 50, something like that, hit OK. And now if you paint with the bluish color on the ground, you'll see that it will uh, add a really, really nice uh, glow on the ground. And then on top of it, I have added a new layer and I set it to overlay. And with the same color, I have painted more and you'll see that you will have a really nice uh, glow on the ground. Then after you finished with everything, press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and I on top of all the layers. This will do a screenshot from all the layers that you have. And now is the moment that we need to apply the camera or filter. So right click and convert it to a smart object, go to filter and choose camera row filter. Those are the settings that I have used here in the camera row filter so you can copy them and play around if you want with your own settings, it's just up to you. So the basics that I modified and then a bit on the curve I drag the darks to the right a bit and then on the detail I increase everything and on the effects I use some grain on the image and that was about it and then hit ok. If you found any value on this video please feel free to subscribe to my channel to be in touch with my latest videos and also don't forget to check out the links in the video description because I always provide you high quality stuff to use in your photo manipulations. I am Mr. 23, see you next time.